Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Marcy with Creators Call Shop here on YouTube and I'm Creators Call on Etsy. I'm glad you all are here. My project today is something a little bit different than what I usually do in my videos. I'm going to be redoing the top of my craft table. So this is a project that I have had in mind for quite some time. I got started on it about three years ago. <laughs> That's as far as it got. So today I am going to be finishing my table. I thought I'd bring all of you along with me in case you're interested in seeing what I do and how I do it. I do have to confess a little bit that I don't have 100%. I just have an idea in my head and I'm pretty sure it's going to work out, but it's a bit of an experiment as well. I want to apologize just a little bit in advance because I, it's smoky out today because of fires and things. I don't know when this is going to air exactly, but today we're having smoke in the air because of the fires and that gives me the sniffles plus allergies and um, so just hopefully that won't bother you too much. I'm going to be using products that I already have on hand and things that I have around the house so I'm not going to be using anything fancy and like I said I'll just talk about what I'm using as I go. So before we get started get yourself a drink, get yourself comfy, I'll meet you right back here on the patio in just a minute. All right, let's get started. So first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what I've already done to this table, and then I'm gonna go through the steps of what I'm going to do to finish the table. So this was an old banquet table, like a church banquet table. It's a six foot by, I don't know, two and a half or something. And it was covered with this really um, dated uh, contact paper. Paper, what started this project was the contact paper started coming up and it was starting to pop up and I couldn't really use it as a craft table much because it was getting in the way it wasn't flat in terms of surface so I started peeling off the contact paper well the contact paper didn't come off very well and as you can see I have all these little patchy pieces I tried scoring it and tried to wet it down and it just didn't come off So then I was kind of undecided about what to do, but at the same time I decided I wanted some kind of like a marble look or something white and bright on top, and I wanted rose gold for the legs. So as you can see, I already painted, spray painted these three years ago with some gold spray paint, um, just the Rust-Oleum brand, and I think it took me two or three coats, but these used to be a really ugly, I'm sorry, dated dark brown. So. What, once I hit that point, I was kind of stumped, and that's part of why I put this away for so long. I had even tried to give it to a thrift store, and they didn't want it, so then I was stuck with my craft table. Plus, it's really heavy, which is part of why it makes a great craft table, but it also makes it awkward to move around and do other things with it. So that's where we are today. So my plan is I'm going to sand down the top and smooth all of this out as much as possible and try to get the brown bits off. Then I'm going to lay down a layer of primer, just a white paint that I have around the house. After that I have some contact paper that I ordered and we will put the contact paper down and then I'm going to attempt to seal it with like a Varathane finish, which I have never worked with Varathane before so we'll see how that goes. But I think that'll give it a nice finish so that the next round of contact paper can be a little more durable and not pop up. All right, so I'm gonna get started with my sanding. I wanted to show you what I'm using. So first I'm gonna start with a pretty heavy, coarse sandpaper. This is an 80 grit, and I've had this for a while. I think I may have gotten it at Walmart, but I know obviously you can get it at any Home Depots or Lowe's or 
hardware store, Ace, wherever you are. So I'm going to start with that to get all the big stuff off. Then I'm going to go down to a little bit finer grade. It's 150. See the number there? And then if it doesn't feel smooth after that, I have um, a sanding block I'm going to use. And this is 220, but I don't have any sandpaper in that grade. So it's very fine. And I don't know if I'll need this or not. So let's get started. So I think I think that will do it on that. We didn't need very much of the light light grade sanding. Uh, now I'm just going to wipe it off very quickly with a damp rag just to get all the sawdust off. And then the next step is to paint. And I will show you here in just a second what I'm using to paint the top. All right. So my next step, like I said, is to paint. And I'm just going to use this white paint here that I have. It's a high hiding primer. We used it on a project earlier this year for walls and stuff. And so there's just a little bit of it left and it's a uh, latex. So it's going to dry pretty quickly. You could use something like this, like kills. Um, it will hide stains. It's a stain blocker, but it's also an oil base. And so it will take forever to dry. And honestly, for a project of this nature, I don't think it really matters that much. Okay, so now I'm just going to roll it very quickly with the primer. I've got my glove on because I'm a messy painter. Um, I'm not a neat and tidy craft person, so you get what you get, man. I am not Martha Stewart. Anyway, we're going to try rolling this on. I don't think it's going to take that much paint. We'll see what happens. All right. So the reason I'm using the primer is mostly to cover up any stains that are on here and then to get rid of that ugly Yes, I said it. Ugly old brown paper. While I am rolling this on, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank my daughter, Camille, who's here videotaping this for me because this is a hard... <laughs> yeah, it's a hard video to film, so she's, she's practicing her filming skills, her videoing skills, and I'm getting my project done. There you go. Look at that. Okay, so I... We'll time it. We'll see how long this takes. This isn't a very heavy coat and this is a very poor surface, so I don't know. Okay, so it's been almost 40 minutes now since we painted and it's pretty dry. The paint's a little bit soft, but it's dry and I think it'll be dry enough to put on the contact paper. So I have this contact paper that I ordered off of Amazon. I ordered it quite a while ago. I know it's not available now, but I bought it so that it would be wide enough and long enough to do this table all in one sheet so I didn't have a seam running down the middle. Along with that I bought this little kit and this was it was called a car window squeegee and exacto knife okay so it's a scraper for helping the contact paper to lay flat kind of like we do when we're gluing things and now I'll have one for my craft room and uh, the exacto knife here to help with the trimming and this is great because my exacto knife is seriously from 1986 and it needs an upgrade and so this will <laughs> be the upgrade so i felt that was a good expense then i'm also going to try and use this old straight edge of my dad's we'll see and i have a pair of scissors just in case i need it i will be laying the contact paper down if i can kind of give you an idea here this way in one long sheet so my daughter is going to help me with the trimming and laying this out flat and then we'll peel the backing off a little bit at a time and just try to lay it down and fingers crossed that we can do this because
Okay, well, we just got done putting on the contact paper, as you saw. Um, it went on pretty fast, a lot faster than I thought it would. We trimmed around the edge with that X-Acto blade, and it's not perfect, but you know what? I think it's totally fine, and honestly, it looks 10,000 times better than it did before we started. I have decided, since this contact paper is pretty durable, it's very thick and almost a little bit brittle. It was kind of breaking on us a bit. Sorry, there's a bug. Contact paper was breaking on us a little bit. I don't think it needs a varathane or a top coat to seal it. I think it's going to be fine because of how thick this is. So I'm going to call this done for today. And I'm, I'm going to be very pleased to have the extra space. This one's a little bit bigger than the one that has been substituting. I appreciate you guys coming along with me. And until next time, I want you to be inspired and do something creative today. Catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. superhuman strength that was really impressive <laughs> Wait. <laughs> and then along with that I got this uh, this car window kit that has the let me try that part again and I'm going I already did the contact Along with that, I got this car window, uh, what's it called? Let me just read it. That's my hair before you start me. Does it look okay? Does it, does it have tweakers like sticking out? Not that I'm not doing the weird tweaky thing. How are my eyebrows? Okay. What do they call it? Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, start over on that part. Back it up, get rid of that.